Scott from Miniac has put out the call for Other Games April and I will answer that call. Other Games April is a chance for content creators to talk about miniatures and hobby supplies from smaller companies and to give the algorithm a break from just recommending Space Marine videos. I wanted to take this opportunity to talk about my favourite miniatures game, Malifaux, and to address a criticism that I often see levelled at it. Often I'll see someone bring up Malifaux online and someone will say something along the lines of, aren't those models really hard to assemble? And then someone else will say, yes. For anyone unfamiliar, Malifaux is a skirmish scale game set in an alternative history slash steampunk slash western slash Victorian Gothic horror setting. It's played with a deck of cards instead of dice and has loads of fun mechanics around bluffing your opponents and setting up combos and synergies. As you'll see from this video, Malifaux models can be a little bit more challenging to assemble than those from the leading miniatures brand, but hopefully by the time I've explained the key differences and watchouts, anyone who's new to Malifaux modelling will be able to approach with a little bit more confidence. We're going to go through the process of assembling a model from this box and compare it to the process of assembling a Games Workshop plastic kit. So this is the survival of the fittest box and if we flip it over we can see 3D renderings of the models in the box. Lord Cooper the Huntmaster, two Imperian Eagles and Marcus the Alpha. On the front of the box, whereas on a Games Workshop product you might see painted miniatures, we have a stylized rendering of the box's contents. One of the things that is unique to Malifaux compared to other games is that you'll never really see a studio assembled and painted model. There isn't really an official source for how they expect you to assemble and paint these. There are no photos of models in the rule books or on the website. Even the models on Weird's Instagram are mostly painted by the community. Personally, I would prefer to have photos of models to go off. However, the art on the front of the boxes and the cards is exactly representative of how the models look when they're assembled. So you can get some idea of what a model will look like from there. Before we open up the box, what tools are we going to need? Well, Malifaux models are made from the same type of plastic as Games Workshop minis, so any tools you use for those will still work here. Malifaux models tend to have fine but pronounced mould lines, so a modelling knife with a fresh sharp blade is essential. You need a pair of clippers, preferably with narrow points to get as close to the finely detailed minis as you dare. Polystyrene cement is the glue of choice here. I like this product from Tamiya. Tamiya? Tamiya? The internet will tell you to use the extra thin version, but I prefer this one as the extra viscosity helps hold the pieces together while they cure. You will want to use poly cement over, say, super glue, as the contact points on Malifaux models can be very small, and the way the poly cement will melt and bond the pieces together will give them the extra strength that they need. Optional but helpful are files, sanding sticks, and fine grit sandpaper. I'm able to remove all of the mold lines in this video using the knife, but sometimes you will need to use an abrasive surface. Finally, it can be helpful to have something to fill gaps. I like green stuff, but if you prefer sprue goo or milliput or something else, then feel free to use that. One thing Games Workshop is very good at is designing the models to conceal gaps naturally. On this Space Marine, for example, the join where the torso meets the legs is hidden behind a belt, the shoulder pads hide where the arms meet the torso, and the arms hide the join between the two halves of the torso. Contrary to this, Malifaux models seem to be designed just as the designer thinks will make the model look best, with not much consideration made for ease of assembly and painting. As such, models like this Banasuva can end up with gaps in really obvious and difficult to hide places. There is a gap in the folds of this cloth on the hip, and then one up here in the fire which would be very difficult to fill because of all the texture. Another thing I like to keep handy when assembling Malifaux models is a sheet of plastic card. This is a one millimeter thick sheet of plastic card and the reason for that I will explain shortly. Opening up the box, we have a sprue, the bases in a little Ziploc bag and the stack cards used for playing the game. We'll put those to one side for the moment. The first thing we might notice is that there are no instructions. We don't get a nice booklet like what GW provides detailing the different ways a model can be assembled and the recommended order for adding the pieces, but fear not, there are instructions available online. They can be found by heading to Weird's website and navigating through resources and then build instructions. I highly recommend that you at least glance at the instructions before you start assembling. Sometimes they can go together in quite unintuitive ways and so having that extra bit of information can be really helpful. It's very easy to glue a piece in and then later find that you need to glue something in behind it and that you've now obstructed your access. You will notice that although the pieces on the sprue are numbered, the parts on the instructions aren't. This can be a little confusing, but if you take your time it shouldn't be too hard to match up the pieces to the diagram. The next thing to point out is the way that these are packaged on the sprues. Unlike assembling a Games Workshop model where you might have to jump backwards and forwards between three or four different sprues hunting for the piece that you need. 
This part here is all for Lord Cooper, which is the model I'll be assembling shortly. This part is for all the eagles, and this part is Marcus. The next thing to point out is the bases. Malifaux uses three base sizes, 30, 40, and 50 mil. Like I have here, a box of figures may come on mixed base sizes. If you're unsure about who goes on what base, it's written on the back of the stack cards at the bottom. Whereas Games Workshop uses these bases with the straight edges and hard angles, Malifaux uses these. Popularised by War Machine and Hordes in the 2000s, they have a rounded edge and a recessed top. The reason for this design is that, in the olden days, pretty much the only way we used to texture bases was by gluing down sand. And because you have this recessed top with a lip, the sand creates a flush level against the bevelled edge. The problem with this is that, in these modern and enlightened times, using sand has fallen out of fashion a little bit, and if you were to use a texture paint or texture paste on these bases, you would find that they don't fill up the recessed area and would sit below the lip of the base. This is where our plastic card from earlier comes in. I like to cut a disc of plastic card and glue it into the cavity to fill the gap. The way I do it is to draw around each base and cut the card out with scissors. I then have to trim down the circles. There probably is a better way of doing this, like measuring, but that would require a level of forethought and planning that I'm just not going to do. So I'm just going to keep on whittling them down like Homer Simpson making his chili spoon. Oh, he said he carved it himself from a bigger spoon. I then glue the discs into place with plastic glue. There will be some gaps, but these are easy enough to fill using texture paste later. Another thing that has become trendy to do is to fully assemble your models off the base and then finish the model and the base separately and glue them on after painting. I don't recommend doing this with Malifaux models. Assembling and painting off the base means that you'll need to use super glue and or pinning to fix the model onto the base. Many Malifaux models have very small contact points and lack the physical bulk to drill in a pin. This is why I use Plasticard rather than something like foam core or cork as it still allows you to use plastic glue for that really strong bond. Now the bases are ready, let's move on to the model. On each sprue is exactly the pieces you need to make the model. There are no war gear options, no compatibility between kits and no posability. The model is what it is unless you're willing to do some extensive conversion work that would involve cutting, reposing and sculpting. Something you might notice is that these are very small parts compared to Games Workshop models. There is debate around what scale both 40k and Malifaux models are anymore, but Games Workshop models definitely follow more what is called heroic scale, meaning that the size of the heads, hands and weapons are exaggerated to make them better stand out on the tabletop, whereas Malifaux is closer to true scale. This means Malifaux models are more slender, with smaller and fiddly parts that add complexity to the assembly. The parts can be quite fragile, even to the point where you need to exercise some caution when removing them from the sprue. I'm sure we've all noticed the angled blades of a pair of clippers will cause anything unsecured to ping around the room when clipped. Well, these forces are still applied, even if the piece is still secured to the sprue. And on some of the more slender, fragile parts that have a lot of contact points, such as these branches, you are at risk of breaking something, as I nearly demonstrate here. Being somewhat chunkier, Games Workshop kits don't tend to have this problem to the same degree. One way around this is to be mindful of how the parts are held onto the sprue, and if clipping through a leg would put undue pressure on a piece, find parts of the sprue to cut through first to relieve the tension. Another thing we need to watch out for when removing models from the sprue is that often the leg won't be against a flat surface. In the case of Cooper's head, the sprue is joined onto his hair, which is both textured and has a part that extends past the piece towards the sprue. Whereas with a Games Workshop kit, the technique is to cut as close to the model as possible to reduce the amount of flash you have to clean up later, with Malifaux, it can be best to leave a bit of the sprue on the model and clean it up later with a knife to avoid getting too close to the detail and texture. Once the parts are off the sprue, come in and tidy up any mold lines and flash with a sharp hobby knife or a file, as you might with a Games Workshop kit. Similarly to hiding gaps, another thing Games Workshop is really good at is concealing mould lines along sharp edges or in discrete places. Malifaux models, on the other hand, will often have a mould line right down an area of textured detail, making it really difficult to remove without damaging the model. I ended up leaving this one on my Malasaurus Rex, and I kind of regret it. Some careful work with a sanding stick would have sorted it out. Oh well, that's just a good excuse to get a second one. Ah, so this is a hazard with any miniature, but it happens to me every time I assemble a Malifaux figure. 
The pieces are so small and hard to grip that I inevitably drop something onto the floor at some point. It is worth taking a moment before you start to clear the area around you just to make it easier to find any dropped pieces. Now the parts are all cleaned up and the base is ready, it's time to start gluing them together. I'm going back to look at the instructions and it seems most of the parts can be simply added to the main body in any order, apart from the arms, which meet together to hold the bow in both hands, so I'll leave them till last. Weird are great at putting little pegs and notches on the contact points, so there's really only one way they can go together, like a jigsaw, and the legs go on fine, but when I come to attach the branches to his back, I run into an issue which brings me to my next tip. Dry fitting is essential. You don't have to get the blue tech out and fully assemble the whole model before gluing or anything like that, but just putting each piece in place to check the fitment before you use glue is a great way to notice any issues before they arise. Cooper has these two branches on his back. At first glance it appears they sit next to each other, so I glue in the upper one. When I try to fit the lower one I can't get in the space because the upper one is in the way. It turned out all three parts need to be assembled together at the same time. It would be helpful if these details were highlighted on the instructions, but they're not, so we just have to be prepared for this kind of thing coming up. Finally, I attached the arms. This too was a challenge. There was only a small contact point for each arm to meet the bow, and it was unclear where the robot fingers on the left hand should go. This is another example of how having studio miniatures would help inform the assembly process. Eventually I was able to work it out from staring at the instructions. So now that he's assembled, you can finish the base however you like, and then prime and paint as normal. I've gone ahead and finished him up with a simple paint scheme so we can watch him spin while we discuss some final thoughts. So, are Malifaux models more difficult to assemble than Games Workshop models? Yes, they are. They require more care and diligence in preparation, they are more fiddly and fragile to assemble, and the resources to help you are not as plentiful or robust. However, having been in the hobby for nearly 20 years, and having tackled some old metal Games Workshop kits that could barely support their own weight, I can honestly say that Malifaux plastics are not that bad if you remember the tips in this video. I think a key point we need to address is that one Malifaux model might be an eighth of your entire crew, whereas one Imperial Guardsman, for example, might not even be an eighth of his squad. I'm sure many of us have sat and despaired at assembling 40 plus of the same or similar model at once. Anyone who's played 8th edition fantasy can relate. At least with Malifaux you have variety, every model is different. So thanks for watching and thanks to Scott and the other creators behind this great initiative. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please consider letting me know in the comments and if you have any other build tips that you'd like to add please leave those below as well. I can't wait to see what everyone else comes up with for Other Games April and I'll see you next month when normal service will be resumed. <laughs>